A pleasure, a joy to deal with the Model 16 court. We will visit again. Okay. You are very cute. Hello, I'm Entrilisim and welcome to an early sneak peek at Stellaris Federations. Federations is the new expansion for Stars, which is coming out on the 17th of March. And thankfully, thanks to Paradox, I've been able to show you some of it early. So they've sponsored this video, so bear that in mind. There'll be a link down below. If you do wish to go check out Stellaris, you can click the link down below and that will take you there. So you can go check the game out. But we're going to be looking at one of the new Origins. Now, an Origin is basically a new feature for your race, your nation, your species, which is how you came to be what you are. And the one we're going to be checking out is Resource Consolidation. This machine intelligence has long since consolidated all resources in their home system into the capital world, covering it entirely with machinery. So with resource consolidation, we basically spent an extra long time in our solar system being like, yeah, that planet, that planet, we don't need these. These are just, they kind of ruin the view. So we break them all open, we take all the resources, and we pack it into our capital world until it's really, really good. And it's just a machine world. Obviously, you can only take this origin if you are a machine race, but then you get a machine world as your starting place, which is brilliant. Machine worlds give you plus 10% uh, resources from all jobs, and you basically get like unlimited slots to be, I'll be all energy with this, or I'll be all material with this. So you can go like full on minerals, full on energy, whatever you want to do, which allows you to have like a really nice specialized starting world if you wish to do that. So we're going to be starting off as obviously machines uh, with unitary cohesion and factory overclocking. My idea for this is like, we were a somewhat underpowered servant race initially to the people who built us, and then we may have upgraded ourselves and become more powerful and overthrown them. And because of that, uh, we have enhanced our memory, but we have to use repurposed hardware, and we have to overclock ourselves in the factory to make ourselves good enough to like be an actual intelligent race. And we are the Model 16 core. Don't ask what happened to the 15 models beforehand. Um, it took a few iterations to get us correct. So, uh, with that said, uh, I'm going to load up a game and we'll see where we start off. And welcome to the Model 16 Core. The Master Conduit. So, this is our starting system. It's actually a really interesting starting system. It's actually a trinary. We have a massive blue star in the center, around which we are based. And then over here we have a yellow star and a nice brown dwarf that didn't actually make it to star status. Uh, you can see that actually like all around these are planets which we have maybe broken open and eaten the insides of. Yeah. Look, it takes a lot to make a machine world. And sometimes you've got to break a few planets to make an omelette. However, the result is this. A nice little machine world. It's pretty, it's totally worth wrecking, you know, three different systems. It's fine. Totally worth it. Anyway, uh, so, right, let's pick off our starting researches. Normally, when you start off, you go, oh, look, right, I'm going to build around this planet that has minerals or this planet that has energy. We don't have that because we may have taken all the minerals and all the energy and dumped into our main planet. But, you know, our main planet's really nice. Look at this. Look at all these districts we've got. Worth it. Anyway, uh, so we don't actually have the ability to go over here and say mine for minerals. So we're actually going to have to go to a new system. Uh, the one thing we do get is because technically we're a trinary, we do have the ability to go to our other stars. And luckily enough, this star is, you know, a research star. Uh, so we could get physics from that. But... First things first, we're going to have a little bit of a jaunt around the galaxy. Got a nice starting edge position as well. I always like a nice edge position. It means you don't get attacked from all sides. All right, we'll let our ship go do its thing. And we'll see what's on the other side. Okay, what have we got here? We have... Orim. Nice big blue star. Big barren world. We could crack this open, get some stuff inside. Uh, we have a tundra world, a big tundra world, and an ocean world, and a continental world as well. Three different worlds that we can go to in this one. Not bad. 
We've made an unanticipated discovery. The planet's team of alien life forms. Dun dun dun. None of them are sapient though. That's fine. More importantly, are any of the machines? No? Okay, they don't matter. And we have our second science ship. Okay, so we have found that RM3 is a 23 size world with a reasonable amount of agricultural districts, which mean nothing of us because we're robots. Uh, a few generator districts. And some reasonable mining districts. RM3A is pretty terrible. And RM2 is also equally pretty meh. RM3 is a possibility for habitation. I think we'll move on and we'll pop up here now. In the meantime, we've also found Wii U, which is quite a vast system. There's a lot of stuff here. Nothing's going to be particularly big, but there's a lot of barren worlds. Strangely barren. Oh, a molten. Barren. 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 I'm getting a feeling that maybe we have a lot of dead space around us. Hmm. Now, one of the things that's changed in the 2.6 Vern update is that you'll see here we have evaluators producing Unity. It used to be coordinators who produced Unity, but the simulation site evaluates produce Unity. The uplink node, which used to create Unity, is now coordinators who create admin capacity. So no longer do you have to worry about your admin capacity being kind of this fixed number that you can only change a little bit. You can actually use uh, coordinators who then create admin capacity and you can have a bigger empire without worrying about the admin cap. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that just yet, but we could do. I'm actually going to build content by second. I think we'll need one until everything gets up and running. Meanwhile, a day in the life of a science vessel. Hello, new worlds. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll take our construction ship and we'll head down here and we'll claim Orem. Like, it's next to us, we should probably claim it, and it also has all of these potentially reasonable worlds to settle. Not hot property, but worthwhile. Putting a claim over. Construction ship away! Anomalous surface variable detected. Hello. Anomaly, a colossal impact crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this planet once. It will take us 180 days to research. Yeah, go for it, why not? You're only looking at, like, boring, barren worlds anyway. FTL Impact. A massive crater on Riblor 1 appears to be a result of a collision with a starship. From the size of the crater, we suspect that a ship exiting hyperspace at maximum velocity rammed the planet for reasons unknown roughly 10,000 years ago. Our ship has picked up residual subspace echoes near the crash site reminiscent of a collapsed particulate field. But as the ship itself disintegrated on impact, the theory can only be, uh, cannot be verified. Oh, we get physics research. Cool. The Grineur. We can report they have uncovered remnants of a spaceship faring species on Wii U, who appeared to have inhabited the planet some 7 million years ago. While it is unclear why the species, who call themselves the Grineur, sounds like some sort of cereal bar, disappeared from the Wii U system, our scientists have isolated a promising archaeological dig site on the planet. Perhaps a further study will yield more clues. Ooh. Okay. I'm interested. We found the first trace of intelligent life. Who are very dead. Ooh, six mineral. That is totally worth claiming. Hey, construction ship, get over here. Build me more drones. Build. Okay, so Wii U is now part of our empire. And it has two six mineral worlds. I'm very, very interested in getting a load more material. I keep calling it material. It's minerals. Otherwise known as stuff that makes our new machine world. Uh, we're going to probably just set up mining stations for all of them because that's incredibly tempting. And we also have our first tradition available. I kind of want to go synchronicity just so we can go self-preservation protocol. Machine leaders are 5th cent less likely to suffer breakdowns and accidents because uh, our leaders can get pretty good. They've got a nice high leader cap. I don't want them dying. They've done a lot for us. That said, we could go discovery, get all those research buffs. Or expansion for the extra development speed. I, honestly, it might be useful going expansion as our first pick. Let's do it. That gives us a 25% uh, colony growth speed, and then we can grab new colonies to start with additional population. 
which I think would be really helpful. Meanwhile, we found Esperia and Hezi. Anomalous surface variable detected. And a large machine of unknown origins. Sure, research that. Large machine, it could be a friend. We need more friends out here. So far, everyone we've found is dead or not sapient. Right, Esperia is now part of our empire, so we are most definitely going to set up a research station for the plus seven, because that's so good. Right now, we've got 20 physics research coming in, so getting a plus seven is going to be pretty handy. And we'll also set up mining stations, why not? Now, one thing I actually do want to do is send some to this archaeological site. But you're busy surveying. I guess you can wait a little bit longer. You might be able to wait longer. I can't. Calculate a hex heptagon. Not hexagon, heptagon. Sorry, you've got one extra side. Get in there. Tradition available. Hello! We can get an additional pop start or starbase influence cost reduction. We're going to go with the additional pop. And then... With the colony ship that I've already brought here for just this reason. Our colony ship has successfully followed its programmed path and made planet fall. Thousands of work units have emerged in the vessel's massive cargo bay to construct an initial deployment post from which the settlement can expand. Efforts to systematically catalogue and designate surface resource deposits are ongoing and all aggressive wildlife in the area surrounding the initial landing site has been pacified. We're now ready to begin mass production of our additional Model 16 population units on the surface. Huzzah! Good job. Meanwhile, Zarquan. Oh, it's another binary. Neat. Ooh. System survey complete. Decoded ancient data crystals have been found at the dig site, chronicling the Gruner's military exploits. While most are local and of little interest, several volumes detail the Gruner's first encounter of an alien species referred to as the Bowel Organism. So you've got granola bars and your bowels. Cool. Little more can be gleaned about the bowel at this point, save that they were a massive plantoid species and had many colonies seeded among the stars. Okay, keep digging. We fully excavated the archaeological site. Okay, I did not expect to be quite so quick. Data crystal records reveal that the Grineur waged war against the Bowel, desiring the plentiful resources purportedly found on their planets. A set of system coordinates has been successfully excavated from one such record. Our archaeologists are uploading the planet's location to our systems now. Perhaps a close excavation of Hezi 2B will be fruitful. Situation oh, that's actually really nearby. Go do it. Find out about the Bowel! Or, as the Grineur referred to them, the Bowel problem. Bowel obstruction. I'll be quiet now. Special project complete. Former Bowel Colony, the Baron. Despite the promises of riches suggested in the ancient Grunner data crystal recovered from Wii U, Hezi 2B is a dry, barren world, void of atmosphere. Fortunately, geological scans revealed a near endless trove of fossilized remains deep in the planet's sedimentary record. Among them is a plantoid species most likely to have been the Bowel, as it is the only one identified in possession of the neurological structures required for sapiens. A targeted excavation should provide more information. Okay, Hezi is now ours. I think we're actually going to go up and grab Atmir as well, since he has a wormhole. And then we'll come back and excavate. I want to find out what happened to the bell. Ooh, tradition. I think we'll go for the population assembly speed. The quicker we can get our population off the ground, the better. Established. Okay, we found a new continental world in Baldoon, but also... RM Prime is now up and running. Good job, RM Prime. We're going to get you a Nexus District, and I think you're going to be about mining, so we'll get you a mining district as well. Which probably makes our Master Conjurer all about energy, which I'm totally fine with. Like, this can have 17 slots. It's kind of nuts. And I'm totally cool with it. Technological acquisition successful. Oh, hello. With thick layers of ash, a notable mass extinction event in the geological record coincides with the material previously extracted from Grenoa data crystals, suggesting that Grenoa firebombed Hezi 2B with gelling incendiary roughly 7 million years ago. Oof. 
Widespread devastation of plant surface depleted local ecosystems, and the lack of oxygen fixing vegetation gradually depleted the plant's atmosphere over the next 60,000 years. That is a very vindictive and long way to kill someone. And the planet that wasn't there. Baldoon 3 is not a planet at all, but a sophisticated 3D projection. At center is a projector that generates an energy field simulating a physical body and gravity well. Oh, gravity well, not gravity well. I just thought it did a really good job of it. Uh, and gravity well so convincingly that our sensors mistook it for an actual planet, producing the anomalous data. We can only speculate as to why some would go to the trouble of faking the presence of a planetary body at this location. Sadly, the projector did not survive our experimentation. Aww. I want a projector that can project a planet that well. So many applications for practical jokes. I think we're going to just quickly grab synchronicity because I want to grab self-preservation protocol. I don't want my people's dying. Enigmatic spacefarers. Neat. Hello. Oh, you came through the wormhole? You're literally the first person we've actually talked to. Everyone else is either dead or not sapient. Reti, daughter of Nuga. Level 16! We greet you! We are operators of Racket Industrial Enterprise, a member of the Caravansary Caravan Coalition. We travel the stars, our eyes catch all that glow. We gather and we trade. We pass through your space in peace, only to buy, to sell. Kisk. We will offer you good deals, many things. We will speak again before we leave. Should you call us, the Caravansary Caravan Coalition will answer. Greetings. Look at your credit silos, Model 16, full to bursting. Please let us lighten them. Let us assist. What can you offer? We have noticed your mining station in orbit of Wii It extracts energy, does it not? We can assist. We can grant you a satellite, one filled with clever technology. We call it Racket Energy Extractor. We can remain in orbit and increase the amount of energy credits you can obtain from Wii surface. Now, for the cost, we have uh, run afoul of some illegalities. Minor details, very trivial. We will require some witness, some support, an upstanding face to back our cause. Would you strong and wise nation vouch for us? Poor, trustworthy traders, very innocent, whose only mistake was distraction of the mind, a mere oversight that led to the transgression of some pesky uh, legislator? Um, We lose 70 influence and we get plus 5 energy to Wii U. <gasps> yes, we will accept your deal. A pleasure, a joy to deal with the Model 16 court. We will visit again. Okay, you are very cute. Meanwhile, our massive master planet is doing pretty well. Um, still got plenty of jobs available, though. Ooh! Several exemplary bowel fossils have been recovered, revealing the long-lost species to have been a hive mind, billions of plantoid units working together as a whole, like the leaves and roots and branches of a tree. Dendrochronology suggests individual bowel specimens had lifespans in the hundreds of years. The lack of structural remains on HESI 2B appear to be the result of the bowels' reliance on remarkable agonic technology, from ships and buildings to wetware, biocomputers, and the ravages of time. Okay. But there's one last one. Coil guns! Huzzah! Uh, I think we'll take engineering from researchers. And that also means we can redo our fleet. Well, I think we'll change you, actually. Just make you a pure interceptor. All these are still base, aren't they? Yeah. And we'll give you deflector, deflector, nano, reactor boost. Would that give us enough? It would. Deflector? Ah, one power too short. Okay. And is there some sort of policy edict, I mean, that we want to do? Map the stars? Eh. Population assembly speed for 12 years, well, almost 12 years, seems totally worthwhile. Machine learning, extra experience gain, uh, yeah, sure. And map the stars. You know what, we'll go for that as well, since we are doing quite a lot of expansion right now. I want to know all the things about all the stars. I want to learn lots. And I also want people to make as many new robot children as possible. Wow, this is a lot of asteroids. And also, Rocky, I see, Rocky, I see. Uh, this looks too much, too much like it's been designed this way. I want the system in our empire just because it looks pretty. 
Coordinates describe the location of another former battle colony have been extracted from a shattered Grenada data crystal. Perhaps this planet will boast some of the resources sought after by the battle's ancient enemies. Situation log adjusted. Okay, oh, this one's actually inside our empire. Sure, head over here now. I'm tempted to just get ourselves like an extra survey vessel. You know what, let's do it. We've got all these resources sitting around, might as well use them. More science ships. And your job is to come down here and survey all of this. And we also get fusion reactor. Ooh, I want both of these. Fuel modulation and global energy management. Uh, I think we'll start with global energy management. Just because that gives us a percentage boost to energy on our planet. And hey, our starting world is amazing for energy because it's basically a giant machine world. It's just one big battery for us. So yeah, totally. We're going to start having sprawl issues soon. So I think we might want to do an extra uplink. Special project complete. Okay, former Balcony, the Shattered. The crew were initially certain they had made a triangulation mistake when deducing the coordinates of the supposed Bowel Colony on the Asperia system, having found nothing but asteroids where they expected a life-bearing planet. However, a close study of the asteroid's composition has revealed they are in fact the remnants of the former Bowel Colony. The once lush planet was blown into several thousand rocky pieces by some unknown collision occurring roughly seven million years ago. Deduction suggests the Grenier played some role in the planet's dark fate. I mean, or it could just be an accident, you know, the planet, planets just sometimes break apart and then you make a machine world out of them. One particular promising asteroid has been selected for further studies appears to possess a large number of fossilized life forms from the lost planet. Okay, we've been like, what, two different dig sites? This is the third dig site now? I want to know. I want to see what the, the thing at the end is of this investigation. Oh, hello. The Shattered. We managed to extract some data fragments from a particularly well-preserved Bowel biocomputer fossil. This 10 million year old relic appears to contain pedagogical information intended for immature members of the species, not yet ready to receive the full range of the hive mind's neural connection. Young bowel or saplings are introduced to growth techniques, horticulture, and nutrition in a more curated experience. Oh. These findings suggest the Bowel Society prized terrestrial landscaping and ecosystem management and were also highly dependent on it for their survival. Interesting. So they were basically the good guys. And the Grenier, like, just killed them. Fair enough. Bad guys win. Oh, hello. More from our archaeology. The discovery of another ancient bowel biocomputer remnant has yielded further insight into the planetoid hive mind's history. The bowel appeared to have originated from a single planet, its location unknown as mere plant life. Prehistoric bowel were all clones of the parent plant, and gradually developed the capacity for hive consciousness over millions of slow, peaceful years of growth on their home planet. Oh, huh. okay. There's so many things over here that we have to look at. Alien writing. Someone used a laser to carve alien writing into this moon. Okay. It appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. Can you imagine that? Like, you're an alien mercenary, you've just finished, you know, a contract, and you're like, hey, what am I going to do with this giant laser I have on my ship? You know what? I'm going to write... I'm going to write my biography, and I'm going to carve it into a planet. Sure. Sure. Hello? A Grinner data crystal has been recovered on M411F, dating to some 7 million years ago. The data crystal contains partially readable military records pertaining to the planet's invasion. Apparently the Grineurs were expecting some measure of armed resistance and were not impressed by the incredibly slow-moving bowel. The record describes the ease at which the bowel's delayed responses were circumvented in a highly derogatory fashion. I mean, I guess they were plants, so that kind of makes sense. I just feel very sorry for them. Speaking of archaeological stuff... Another Grunner data crystal will be unearthed, dealing, detailing a series of military orders, including the coordinates of another form of Bowel Colony. Another one? Our archaeologists, eager to further unravel the history of these two foes, are uploading the data now. Situation log adjusted. Wait. It's all the way down here? On a planet that is livable? 
Okay. Special project complete. Former Balcony, the silenced. Our research is excited to discover the location of the third Balcony. Corresponds to a planet still possessing an atmosphere and life. While RM2 does not seem particularly lush or remarkably resource laden, our scientists are eager to begin a target excavation to search for any remains of the bowel or the Grenier. Oh, hi! The Silicron Continuance! Custodian Matrix! Ancient Caretakers. You're a fallen machine empire. Synthetic civilization detected. Scanning for signal corruption. Stand by. Signal corruption nominal. Initiate handshake protocol. Message follows. Greetings, fellow synthetics. You are approaching Silicron Continuance Territory. The system serves a refuge for sapient organics fleeing the threat. All biological sapients within the refuge are under Silicron protection. Attacks on refugees, habitats, and stasis chambers will not be tolerated. The Custodian Project welcomes assistance in the form of processing cycles, resources, and war assets. Establish a subspace link with the central processing for further details. Okay. Hi. Our theoretical models have long suggested the, the existence of other intelligent civilizations in the galaxy. The theory is now be confirmed. The alien political entity that have encountered appears to be an old one, possessing technology that is far advanced. Caution is advised. Construction complete. Hello. Well, that means this area is pretty safe. That's nice. Don't have to worry about uh, getting attacked from this direction. Oh, they've got ruined rings. And an intact ring. Oh, no, it's got one ruined section. I still love the rings. They look so cool. And we should take energy grid here for the extra energy, but also we desperately need more amenities, which, say, drone storage will do. So I think we need to go drone storage for the amenities, and then maybe replace one of our uplink nodes, because we don't have a problem with admin capacity right now. And I think we'll also upgrade our ships. So, improved deflectors for you. Nanocomposite armor. I mean, we could actually go improve deflectors all around and then give you just a reactor boost. Yeah. Right, archaeological site. Young bowel fossil specimens have been uncovered from the geological record. Those no longer have diminished hive neurologies. Instead, the structures required for subspace ethase communication are entirely missing. Carbon dating of the species has confirmed that some hundreds of years following the Grenier invasion, the bowel began to devolve their abilities to connect to another's as a hive mind. Unfortunately, it seems no further data relevant can be extracted from the site. How strange. Okay. Well, keep moving on. Grenier distress signal? Our scientists picking up a distress signal bearing Grenier... Datalogical signatures it appears to originate from a system proofs unknown to us near Unlith. What kind of ancient message could it possibly contain? Where is this? Near Unlith? Who is free? You're free. Survey the system. I know you need to come back here and do more archaeology, but... I want to find out what's going on. Anomalous surface variable detected. The bowel organism. We've traced the Grenier distress signal to its source, uncovering a crumbling Grenier research facility hanging in orbit of an otherwise long abandoned planet. The facility is reaching critical energy failure, having survived for millions of years on an extensive network of solar panels and decaying auto repair systems, all of which are now approaching terminal status. Shocking enough, scans of the facility reveal the presence of a single life form. A crew of dispatch and away team are ready to report. The last bowel. Deep in the dilapidated ruins of the time-worn Grenier research facility, among the long-defunct computer panels and deteriorated research equipment, our ship's crew has made an incredible find. Pincushioned by nutrient tubes and critically failing life support systems lies one single organism, the last bowel. Miraculously still alive, Surrounded by the sludgy remains of other species in a row of cracked and leaking vats. Owing to our extensive previous archaeological studies of the species, we should be able to communicate with this last specimen. 
A visitor. Can it be? The bow shudders in its vat. But you are not the ones who put us here, though you come as the alarm sound. Has you come to give us peace at last? Perhaps, but at first we have a few questions. Very typical machine race. Yeah, sure, but we need to ask you questions. Sign it for several minutes. Then ask, we have waited millennia. We can endure a moment more. You have endured like 7,000 millennia, so that's a lot of millennia. Tell us about yourself. Our self, our self. Yes, what is there to tell? We sat beneath the stars on soft earth, and furled our leaves like sails to the sun overhead. We remember every drop of water that quenched them in the parched summers, every shivering hoar that blanketed them in winters. We bent in the wind as the stars wheeled overhead. We were uprooted, we were burned, we were sliced, we were left here. We watched our others rot in their glass prisons. Okay. That's, uh... That's a lot. What happened to the bell? When the burners came, entire colonies were silenced before the danger was known to us. Like a limb gone limp. Nerves cut suddenly and totally at the base. And then we lost the next. And the next, and the next. One by one, their voices left the chorus. We lost our others. Their silence deathened us who remained. Can you understand, visitor? We could not bear to hear more agony. The burners were swift, like you, swifter. And before we could withdraw, they had set us all aflame, all burnt to ash in the air filled with that grey agony the dust of our lost. Do you want to join us? We're not fleshy people, we're machine people. Totally different. No, we have lived too long in this wretched state. Now we long only for an end. Though first, would you tell us? We have been sealed here for so long. Blind to all but this room watching the stale air slowly wear the station down to its metal bones. Tell us, does our kind yet live? In a sense, though they're no longer sapient. Perhaps, perhaps that is best. The machine pumping mysterious fluids in and out of the creature's body begins to sputter and hiss. It is clearly on its last mechanical grasp, and the bow will perish without it. Silence, yes, at last it approaches. We welcome it, as our brethren did long ago. Farewell, Model 16. May your kin endure less agony in this world. Bye. And I think that's where we'll call it for now. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little early look at the resource consolidation origin for Stellaris Federations. If you are interested, Stellaris Federations is coming out in a few days' time, and there will be a link down below in the description. Go check that out if you want to. Thank you very much to Paradox for allowing me to do this early look. This has, of course, been sponsored by Paradox, and you can check out the link down below. I like a little machine world. We only had to break an entire solar system to build it, so... I think that's good quality on our behalf. But, uh, yeah, until next time, I've been Andrew Lissim. Hope you've liked. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe. You know the draw by now. And give us a comment down below saying what you're looking forward to in the new Stellaris expansion. But until next time, I've been Andrew Lissim. We've been the Model 16 core. And this has been our beautiful machine world. There are many like it, but this one is ours. Stay shiny. <laughs>